Hello and welcome to this video on determining values for which a rational expression is undefined. Okay, talked about rational expressions in other videos. Um, remember a rational expression is simply a, a fraction where the numerator and denominator are both polynomials. Right? It's a ratio of two polynomials. And uh, I just got a couple examples here, a few examples where I'm asked to find the values for which a certain rational expression is undefined. So here's my first one. So find the value or values, there may be more than one, uh, for which the rational expression is undefined. So here, polynomial divided by polynomial, right, 3 over x plus 7. Now let's talk about you know when is a when is a fraction not defined? So remember this one little thing here this is gonna be important you cannot divide by 0 Right. In other words, uh, you know, denominators cannot be equal to zero, right? Because uh, if you're in the denominator, you're the you're the divisor, right? That's what you're dividing by, the denominator. So denominators cannot be equal to zero. Right. Um, so dividing by zero is considered an you know undefined operation. As if you think about division, it's like, you know, the numerator is, you can think of as a number of objects, you know, maybe number of apples or something. And the denominator you can think of as, you know, the amount of people you're trying to give those apples to. And, you're, and you want to do it so that every, uh, it's fair, that everybody has the same number of apples. So if I had 12 apples, and I was trying to divide it amongst, you know, three people. Each person would get four apples, right? If I divide, uh, you don't need to write apples, you know, like but each person would get four objects if I was dividing things fairly. Um, and, you know, so like if I were to have, say, five apples and I said, now divide that by zero, You know, give these five apples to no one. Well, that doesn't make any sense. Okay, um, when you're doing integer, you know, whole number division, how can I give five apples to no people? Yeah, so this uh, this doesn't make sense. This would be considered an undefined operation. All right, it doesn't make sense. Okay, so little side note. So let's keep that in mind, right? We're dividing by zero is undefined. So in this expression, three divided by x plus seven, we're trying to figure out, you know, what, what value of the variable will make me, you know, divide by zero here. What, what value of x can I not use? So I take just the denominator only. And let's find, you know, when, when, you know, for what values of x, when is the denominator x plus 7 going to be equal to 0? I'll answer that question. And we have a simple equation to solve here. You know, when is x plus 7 equal to 0? I would simply subtract 7 from both sides. And that's when x is negative 7. All right. So that means back in this expression, okay, so when you're looking at 3 divided by x plus 7, uh, maybe off to the side I'll say the value of x cannot be negative 7, right? Because if x were negative 7, I'd have 3 divided by 0. And again, that's like my little talk over here. It's like I have three objects and I want to give them to to zero people. Again, that doesn't mean anything. 
um, so undefined. So the I mean to answer the question then, I would just write you know negative seven makes the expression undefined or x equals negative seven makes the expression undefined. Or, you know, maybe I would have just said this, you know, for short, x cannot be negative 7 because I'd, I'd be dividing by 0. Okay, so here's a, another example. Now this time I'm going to have, not only will there be a variable in the denominator, but also the numerator. And I wanted to have this example to point something out. The, you know, again, a little side note. So denominators cannot be zero. Right? We've established this. Can't divide by zero, that's undefined. Numerators can be. Numerator can be zero. That's fine. And again, you think about it. If I have nothing and I say I want to divide this nothing among five people, I have nothing at all, no apples, no 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 objects of of any kind, and I say I want to give each of you five people something from this nothing. <laughs> I know it sounds funny, but if I have nothing and I want to divide that amongst five people, each of those five people will get nothing, right? Um, and it it works that way when whenever the numerator is zero, zero divided by you know seventeen is zero. And in fact, zero divided by any non-zero number. All right, so I'm just going to put down here non-zero number because remember, I'm saying non-zero because de you know, denominators can't be zero. It, but zero divided by any non-zero number is going to be zero. Um, and if you go ahead and into a calculus course, you can talk, now this is still undefined here if you have something that's actually zero divided by something that's actually zero. This is undefined, right, you know, it can't divide by zero. Um, in, in, in the calculus class you'll talk about, well, what if the numerator and denominator are approaching zero, they're, 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 they're values that are getting closer and closer to zero, and, and you'll talk about things called undeter indeterminate forms and limits and but for right now, just know that, you know, this is bad. Having, having a zero in the denominator. But having zero in the numerator is okay. All right, that's, that's fine. Okay, so in this example, you know, n minus 3 divided by 3n plus 5, you know, rational expression, polynomial over polynomial. I'm asked for what values of n, right, the variables n this time, is the expression going to be undefined? And the reason I pointed this out over here is because very, all too often I'll see people say that, well, n can't be 3, you know. People say, what about, what, well, what, let's see what happens when n equals 3. All right, so when n equals 3, we have, you know, 3 minus 3 in the numerator, divided by and then 3 times 3 plus 5 in the denominator. So that's 0 in the numerator, divided by and then, you know, six, uh, 9 plus 5, 3 times 3 is 9, plus 5 is 14. And as I mentioned over here, having 0 in the numerator is fine. And as long as the denominator is not 0, 0 divided by a non-zero number is 0. This has a value. It is defined. It has a defined value, and that value is zero. So the numerator can be zero, n can be three. Three is fine. Um, it's just, you know, again, I see people too often say n can't be three because they forget that the numerator can be zero. All right, so just be careful with that. All I'm really focused on is the denominator. 
you know, when, when is the denominator equal to zero? Because that's bad. All right, so when is 3n plus 5 the denominator equal to zero? And then I would simply subtract 5, right? So 3n plus 5 is going to be zero when 3n is equal to negative 5, and then dividing by 3, which is a, a positive 3. So when n equals you know, negative 5 divided by positive 3, that's negative 5 thirds or negative 1 in, 1 in 2 thirds, however you want to write that. Um, so this value is no good. All right, and you can check it. When I plug this in for n, you'd get 0 in the denominator. You'd be dividing by 0. So you could write out the words, you know, n equals negative 5 thirds is the value that makes this expression undefined. But I'm just going to simply state that n cannot be equal. I cannot replace n with negative 5 thirds. And I'll leave it, I'll just leave it at that. Oops, sorry. Okay, but you know, cannot equal. Um, it can be anything else. n can be 3, 5, a million, 1, 2 billionths. You know, anything that's not negative 5 thirds, I can replace n with and get a defined value. This one makes it undefined because I'm dividing by 0. Right, and then I have just just one last example, very quick, um, just to show that you know these past two examples, I have had uh, what's called a linear polynomial, a degree one polynomial in the denominator, um, but that's not always the case. Uh, you can have higher degree polynomials. So here's just one one more with a degree two polynomial, an x squared, a quadratic polynomial in the denominator. All right, so same thing. Fi I'm going to find what value or values, right? This time there might be more than one. What values of x make this undefined? Make me divide by zero. Put zero in the denominator. Uh, and again, be careful. Too many people will say, oh, the numerator can't be zero either. They'll say x can't be zero. Well, you know, let's just check this off to the side here. When x equals 0, yes, the numerator is 0, but remember, that's fine. And the denominator is 0 squared, you know, minus 6 times 0, minus 40, right? Just replacing all the x's with 0. And after simplifying a little bit, we have 0 in the numerator divided by and then 0 minus 0 minus 40, that'd be negative 40. And, you know, this is defined. This is okay. The numerator can be 0, and as long as the denominator is a non-zero number, 0 divided by a non-zero number is 0. So again, this, this is defined. It has a definite value when x is 0. Okay, so the numerator can be zero here again. All right, don't don't even worry about that. What we're worried about, what you should be thinking when asked, what makes this fraction, what makes this rational expression undefined, is only about the denominator. When is the denominator equal to zero? X squared minus six x minus forty. When is that equal to zero? And then I'll solve this equation and see what numbers I can't use in this expression. All right, so I have here a quadratic equation. You can solve it using the quadratic formula or completing the square, and you can see other videos on that. Um, look for other people's or mine. I'll, I'll have some of those up later. Um, but for right now, let's solve it by something I've had a previous video on, is you know, solving this quadratic by factoring. Um, you know, everything's on one side, zero on the other, standard form, wonderful. And then I factor this x squared minus 6x minus 40. Now you can factor it by grouping if you want. Um, but the lead coefficient is 1. So very simply, I'm just looking for factors of negative 40 that add up to negative 6, that have a sum of negative 6. 
and that would be a uh, you know negative 10 and positive 4. So I know that this is going to factor to x minus 10 times x plus 4. And you can double check, distribute the x, distribute the negative 10, and combine like terms. You will indeed get back x squared minus 6x minus 40. And now I have a product equal to 0. So I can apply what's called the zero product property, which I abbreviate as ZPP, which states that if I have a product equal to zero, then one of those factors must be zero. So either x minus 10 is equal to zero, or x plus 4 could be equal to zero. And, and I, in either of these cases, this would be a true statement. All right, And when x minus 10 equals zero, Um, the value of x, sorry, the value of x would be positive 10. Just add 10. Or, in the other scenario, when this would be true, when x plus 4 equals 0, the value of x would have to be negative 4. And then you check these, you know, if you look at 10, right, you know, that'd be 100, 10 squared, right, 100 minus 60, 6 times 10, minus 40. 100 minus 60 minus 40 would indeed be 0. So this is good, right? And then negative four, same thing. Neg negative four squared, negative four times negative four would be positive 16. Negative six times negative four would be positive 24. So you have 16 plus 24, which would be 40, minus 40 is zero. This is also a good solution to that equation. So now this is telling me what numbers are not allowed to be plugged into my original expression, right? This fraction up here. So for uh, this expression in x divided by x squared minus 6x minus 40, the value of x, what, what numbers I can replace x with, uh, the value of x cannot be 10 and it can, at the same time, it cannot be negative 4. All right, and I put the word and there because both of these have to be true. Right? If the word or was there, then you know, x could be 10 and this would be, this, you know, one of, as long as one of these is true, it would be fine, but I have to have and there. All right? Bo both of these can't happen. So 11 is fine. I can plug in zero as we saw up here. I can plug in a million, a billion, a, a, a tenth, two thirds. Right? As long as it's not one of these two, the value of this expression will be defined. So there we have it. Right. When x is 10 or when x is negative four, we're dividing by zero. This expression is undefined. All right. And as I said, there's plenty of plenty of examples out there. This is just a few. Um, you can make up your own and just try to figure out where the denominator is zero. Right? What makes me divide by zero? That's where the expression will be undefined. Right. And as always, you know, I like to say, please read your texts. Right? Read through the author author's examples. Try to work them out on your own. Try practicing problems from back subsections, other 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 places on your own. Try to get it on your own first. Make sure you understand it because I feel like it sticks better when you learn it on your own. Um, and don't just give up after the first attempt. You know, if you if you're trying something out and, and you know practicing problems and several attempts in, you're still not still not getting it, still not clicking. Maybe even just maybe even try reading through the reading through your text again. Maybe something will click the second time through, the third time through, but if after that you're still having trouble, you know, then it is not it is not a sign of weakness at all to go out looking for help. You know, ask a teacher, ask a tutor, ask a friend, look for supplemental materials, look for videos like this one or plenty of other better ones out there, I promise you. Um, and just keep at it. Stay persistent. Stay active, and I'm, I know you'll get it, and try to have fun with it. Thank you.